of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares can destroy. Be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of Jesus Christ our brother, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, we begin to celebrate again ordinary time. That's why our opening hymn was all about time. The different times of the day, from morning till night, from waking till sleeping, which really is a metaphor for the seasons of our lives from birth to death. Let's prepare our hearts then to celebrate this time and this Eucharist together. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Together let us praise God as we sing. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, 
right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen, amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble and they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And shame covers my face I have become an outcast to my brothers A stranger to my mother's children Because zeal for your house consumes me And the insults of those who blaspheme you Fall upon me Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O oh Lord, for the time of your favor, O oh God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O oh Lord, for bounteous is your kindness and your great mercy turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See you, lowly ones, and be glad 
You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, and the seas whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one person, sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all people inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one person, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The spirit of truth Testify to me, says the Lord, and you will also testify. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the 12th Sunday of the ordinary time of the church year. The church year is divided between the major seasons and feasts, the Advent Christmas Epiphany cycle, and the Lenten Easter Pentecost cycle. 
The second cycle is followed by the two major feasts of Trinity Sunday and Corpus Christi Sunday, which we have just celebrated in the past two weeks. So now we return to the ordinary time of the church year. But this year, perhaps as no other year in our lives, the time we are living in is far from ordinary. This pandemic and the isolation that comes with it have caused us to slow down. Our usual routines, our schedules, the predictability of our days have been interrupted, upended, and in many cases just playing ground to a halt. This is no ordinary time. We sit confined to our homes, some enjoying the leisure of having time to get projects done that have been on to-do lists for decades. Others chomping at the bit to get out and start doing things that might create a sense of normalcy returning. Before this crisis, we probably thought we knew what time is. We presumed that a simple glance at a clock or a calendar could tell us all we needed to know about the time of day or the time of the year. But this hiatus has taken away that confidence. The brilliant North African Bishop Augustine of Hippo, who lived 1,500 years ago, spoke for all of us when he acknowledged that time is so ordinary as to be impossibly difficult to define. He said, what then is time? If no one asks me, I know what it is. If I wish to explain it to him who asks, I do not know. Or to put it more simply, I know what time is until you ask me to explain it. In discussing time with university students, I often ask them, what year is it? And they inevitably respond with the Western calendar, which now serves as the global business calendar. Occasionally, one of them will suggest another calendar, like the Chinese calendar, or re even refer to it by its animal name, the year of the ox or the year of the rat. And some may even reference the Jewish year, which begins on the feast of Rosh Hashanah, or the Islamic calendar. An investigation of world calendars will turn up dozens more from different areas, cultures, and religion. Some friends from Korea have pointed out that they celebrate two birthdays, one for their solar year birthday and another for their lunar year birthday, which rarely coincide. But here in the Western Hemisphere, we most easily settle into the presumption that everyone lives by our calendar. But perhaps what we should really recognize is that of more significance than the, the world clock and calendar are the calendars and timelines that each of us chooses to live by. Or perhaps more accurately, calendars and timelines that choose us. Consider the woman who finds out that she's pregnant. Suddenly time is rec recognized by trimesters and then by weeks until her due date. Or the student beginning a certain year or semester of school, the accountant dealing with tax season, the bride's mother planning a wedding, or the patient receiving a diagnosis of only a few months to live. Each of these begins to live by a personal calendar that may have little or nothing in common with the weeks and months passing on the calendar that hangs on the wall. Does this imply that time is relative and by relative, therefore, unimportant? On the contrary, it suggests that all time is valuable, every moment precious, every day irreplaceable. As the familiar meditation from the Hebrew Bible's Book of Ecclesiastes proposes, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. If, in fact, as his ancient wisdom claims, there is an appointed time for everything, 
Perhaps the difficulties, disappointments, frustration, and failures that we seem to experience so often in life come from our not being in sync with what should be happening at any particular time. Perhaps the key to this insight is that the success in life comes from living in the present. Perhaps significance in life comes from living the ordinary in the best possible way. There is a certain irony in the fact that we can have certain days of great significance in our lives only because we have lived through hundreds of ordinary, routine, humdrum, predictable days to get there. Through hundreds and hundreds of ordinary days, ordinary days must be lived well to achieve significant milestones. We can only celebrate anniversaries of marriage or milestones in careers and the musical recitals of our children because they all acknowledge the accomplishments that were achieved by regular, consistent, patient, faithful attention to the responsibilities ha at hand day after day. You can only gather friends and family for your golden wedding anniversary or retire from your company after decades of service if you have been faithfully fulfilling your daily, weekly, monthly, yearly responsibilities. The day we celebrate today, Father's Day, is a celebration of all the ordinary days of ordinary lives filled with labor and love that men have devoted to their families. It's a day of celebration for all the faithfulness in good times and bad, all the sacrifices, large and small, all the actions, seen and unseen, that have brought security, safety, joy, and peace to families. We are living in times that are far from ordinary, but today's scriptures reassure us time and again that we need not be afraid. The God who watches over every sparrow, the God who knows how many hairs are on each of our heads, this God will not abandon us. This God is with us even in the most difficult of times. Perhaps we can see in this extraordinary time in which we are now living a grace a grace that will enable us to step back and see everything in a new way, appreciate everything and everyone more deeply, and live life more fully. As G.K. Chesterton warns us, the greatest illusion of all illusions is the illusion of familiarity. So we must, Chesterton goes on to say, learn to look at things familiar until they look unfamiliar again. It is love that gives us the ability to see things in a new way. It is love that gives us the ability to transcend time, to move beyond time to the eternal now, to be truly present to this moment, and in this moment, to every moment. Or as William Blake says, to see the universe in a grain of sand and hold eternity in an hour. We are in ordinary time. Live it extraordinarily well. Let's together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, amen. With confidence now, let us pray for our needs, the needs of the church, and the needs of the whole world. We pray for the church, that all of us as members of parishes and faith communities will bear witness to the gospel in word and in deed. For this we pray. We pray for leaders of nations, that in all countries, prisons will be places of reform and the death sentence abolished. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of humanity, that through this time of crisis, 
we are led to build a world rich in mercy, bright with care for the vulnerable, enlivened with an appreciation of our connection to the natural world, and renewed by an awareness of the deeply spiritual nature of life and presence of the divine. For this we pray. Lord, to our prayer. We pray for fathers as we celebrate Father's Day. We give our thanks, Creator God, for the fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, and father figures in our lives. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for continued healing for all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish. For them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have passed into new life this week, especially Pat Catalfamo, Neil McKinnon, Fran Fortuna, Sister Loretta Young, and Teresa Thomas. For them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our personal needs and the intentions written in the Parish Book of Prayers, which we now offer in silence. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the universe, we worship you as Lord. God, ever close to us, we rejoice to call you Father. From this world's uncertainty, we look to your covenant. Keep us one in your peace, secure in your love. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Search me and you know me All my thoughts lie open to your gaze When I walk or lie down You are before me Ever the maker and keeper of my days My resting and my rising You discern my purpose from afar And with love everlasting you besiege me In every moment of life or death you are Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you have known its meaning through and through. You are with me beyond my understanding, God of my present, my past and future too. For you created me and shaped me, gave me life within my mother's womb. For the wonder of who I am, I praise you, safe in your hands, all creation is made new. For the wonder of who I am, I praise you. Safe in your hands, all creation is made new.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of Christ's name, for our, for our good and the good of all the church. O Lord, receive the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its actions, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end, we acclaim. the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, his brother bishops, all who minister in your church and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our mother, and Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. With confidence we pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, 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 peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us on us Lamb of God You take away the sins of the world Grant us peace Behold the Lamb of God Behold him who takes away the sins of the world Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Although not physically present at this Mass, we remember that as the baptized, we are intimately and really united as the Church, the body of Christ as we participate in this spiritual Holy Communion. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy lord to share this heavenly food you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat come give to us O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. And as we celebrate Father's Day today, Paul has prepared a special song that we want to dedicate to all fathers. Fathers who remember the day they dropped their kid off at preschool for the first time, fathers who remember the day they walked their daughter down the aisle, fathers who remember the day they took their son and left him at college. Here's a Father's Day song. 
The hardest part of love is letting go. Well, this son of mine I love so well and all the toil it takes. I give to him a garden and keep it clear of snakes. But the one thing he most treasures is to make his own mistakes. Oh, he goes charging on the cliffs of life, a reckless mountaineer. I could help him not to stumble. I could warn him what to fear. I could shout until I'm breathless and he'd still refuse to hear. Oh, but you cannot close the acorn once the oak begins to grow. And you cannot close your heart to what it fears and needs to know. Now the hardest part of love is the letting go. As a child I found a sparrow who had fallen from its nest. And I nursed him back to health till he was stronger than the rest. But when I tried to hold it, then it pecked and scratched my chest till I let it go. And I watched it fly away from me with its bright and self-resolve. A part of me was cursing, I had helped it grow so strong. And I feared it might grow hungry, and I feared it might go wrong. Oh. But I could not close the acorn once the oak began to grow. And I cannot close my heart to what it fears and needs to know. Now the hardest part of love is the letting go. And it's only in Eden grows a rose without a thorn. And your children start to leave you on the day that they are born. They will leave you there to cheer for them. They will leave you there to mourn ever so. Like an ark on uncharted seas, their lives will be tossed. And the deeper is your love for them, the crueler is the cost. And just when they start to find themselves, it's when you fear their loss. Oh, but you cannot close the acorn once the oak begins to grow. And you cannot close your heart to what it fears and needs to know. Now the hardest part of love and the rarest part of love and the truest part of love is letting go. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sacred pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And today's Father's Day, so we have a special blessing for our fathers. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth in their lives. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And after our final hymn, we'll be back with some announcements from Sister Jeremy. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. lies. 
Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. So I spent 24 years in education and from the time I was five years old, I hated school. So I'm going to make an announcement about school for all of you who go to school. Our school at St. Joe's now has a universal pre-K and so we invite all of our parishioners who might have children ready for the pre-K program to contact our school to register them in the universal pre-K program that will begin this September. This is a free program because it is, um, it is, uh, what's? Funded by the state. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it for oh, me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you may have received uh, a robocall or a, an email from the parish about our one question poll about when we open on the first weekend of July, hopefully, uh, what, what are your thoughts about coming back? And we give you about five options. I'll be there right away or I'm not ready to come back. And so if you haven't gotten that, then go to our website or go to our Facebook page uh, and uh, you can answer that question or you can call the rectory. Uh, but you'll have to know what the, you, you have to know what the question is. So you'll, have, you'll see it online and then you can either send us an email or you can call us. So we want to get your feedback on that, know what you're thinking. So have a happy Father's Day. God bless you. <laughs>